Hi there. Good to be back with you again today as we continue through the Word of God. And we're going to be reading Esther chapters 3, 4, 5, and 6. And we'll start at Esther chapter 3. After these things did King Ahasuerus promote Haman, the son of Hamadatha the Agai, and advanced him and set his seat above all the princes that were with him. And all the king's servants that were in the king's gate bowed and reverenced Haman, for the king had so commanded concerning him. But Mordecai bowed not, excuse me, bowed not, nor did him reverence. Then the king's servants, which were in the king's gate, said unto Mordecai, Why transgressest thou the king's commandment? Now it came to pass, when they spake daily unto him, and he hearkened not unto them, that they told Haman to see whether Mordecai's matters would stand, for he had told them that he was a Jew. And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence, then was Haman full of wrath, and he thought scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone. For they had showed him the people of Mordecai, wherefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, even the people of Mordecai. In the first month, that is, the month of Nisan, in the twelfth year of king of Ahasuerus, they cast her, that is, the lot before Haman, from day to day, and from month to month, to the twelfth month, that is, the month Adar. And Haman said unto king Ahasuerus, There is a certain people scattered abroad, and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of that kingdom, and their laws are diverse from all people, neither keep they the king's laws. Therefore it is not for the king's prophet to suffer them. If it please the king, let it be written that they may be destroyed, and I will pay ten thousand talents of silver to the hands of those that have the charge of the business to bring it into the king's treasuries. And the king took his ring from his hand and gave it unto Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agai, the Jews' enemy. And the king said unto Haman, The silver is given to thee, the people also, to do with them, as it seemeth good to thee. Then were the king's scribes called on the thirteenth day of the first month, and there was written according to all that Haman had commanded unto the king's lieutenants, to the governors that were over every province, to the rulers of every people of every province, according to the writing thereof, and to every people after their language. In the name of King Ahasuerus was it written and sealed with the king's reign. And letters were sent by post into all the king's provinces to destroy, to kill, and to cause to perish all Jews, both young and old, little children and women, in one day, even upon the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month of dark and to take the spoil of them for a prey. The copy of the writing for a commandment to be given in every province was published unto all people, that they should be ready against that day. The post went out, being hastened by the king's commandment, and the decree was given to Shushan the palace, given in Shushan the palace. And the king and Haman sat down to drink, but the city Shushan was perplexed. Esther chapter 4 when Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes and went out to the midst of the city and cried with a loud voice, cried with a loud and bitter cry, and came even before the king's gate, for none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And in every province whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, there was great mourning among the Jews, and fasting and weeping and wailing, and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. So Esther's maids and her chamberlains came and told it her. Then was the queen exceedingly grieved, and she sent raiment to clothe Mordecai to take away a sackcloth from him, but he received it not. Then called Esther for a hatach, one of the king's chamberlains, whom he had appointed to attend upon her, and gave him a commandment to Mordecai to know what it was and why it was. So Hatach went forth to Mordecai to the street of the city, which was before the king's gate. And Mordecai told him of all that had happened unto him, and of the sum of the money that Haman had promised to pay the king's treasuries for the Jews to destroy them. Also he gave him a copy of the writing for the decree that was given at Shushan to destroy them, to show it unto Esther, and to declare it unto her, and to charge her that she should go in unto the king to make supplication unto him, and to make request before him for her people. 
And Hattach came and told Esther the words of Mordecai. Again, Esther spake unto Hattach and gave him commandment unto Mordecai. All the king's servants and all and the people of the king's provinces do know that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come unto the king and to the inner court who is not called, there is one law of his to put him to death, except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter that he may live. But I have not been called to come in unto the king these thirty days. And they told to Mordecai Esther's words. Then Mordecai commanded to Esther to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then Esther bade him. Then returned Mordecai this answer. Go, gather together all the Jews that present in Shushan, and fast ye for me. Neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way, and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. <sighs> Esther chapter 5. It came to pass on the third day that Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house over against the king's house. The king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house over against the gate of the house. And it was so when the king saw Esther the queen standing in the court that she obtained favor in his sight. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. Then said the king unto her, What will thou, Queen Esther, and what is thy request? It shall be given thee to the half of the kingdom. And Esther answered, If it seem good unto the king, let the king and Haman come this day unto the banquet that I have prepared for him. Then the king said, Cause Haman to make haste, that he may do as Esther had said. So the king and Haman came to the banquet that Esther had prepared. And the king said unto Esther at the banquet of wine, What is thy petition? And it shall be granted thee, and what is thy request? Even to the half of the kingdom it shall be performed. Then Esther, then answered Esther and said, My petition and my request is, If I have found favor in the sight of the king, and if it please the king to grant my petition and to perform my request, let the king and Haman come to the banquet that I shall prepare for them, and I will do tomorrow as the king has said. Then went Haman forth that day joyful and with a glad heart. But when Haman saw Mordecai in the king's gate, that he stood not up nor moved for him, he was full of indignation against Mordecai. Nevertheless, Haman refrained himself, and when he came home, he sent and called for his friends and Zeresh his wife. And Haman told them of the glory of his riches and the multitude of his children and all the things wherein the king had promoted him and how he had advanced him above the princes and servants of the king. Haman said moreover, Yea, Esther the queen did let no man come in with the king unto the banquet that she had prepared but myself. And tomorrow am I invited unto her also with the king. Yet all this availeth me nothing so long as I see Mordecai the Jew sitting at the king's gate. Then said Zeresh his wife and all his friends unto him, Let a gallows be made of fifty cubits high, and tomorrow speak thou unto the king, that Mordecai may be hanged therein. Go thou in merrily with the king unto the banquet. And the thing pleased Haman, and he caused the gallows to be made. Esther chapter 6 On that night could not the king sleep, and he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles, and they were read before the king. And it was found written that Mordecai had told of Bigna and Teresh, two of the king's chamberlains, the keepers of the door, who sought to lay hand on the king Ahasuerus. And the king said, What honor and dignity hath been done to Mordecai for this? Then said the king's servants that ministered unto him, There is nothing done for him. And the king said, Who is in the court? Now Haman was come into the outward court of the king's house to speak unto the king to hang Mordecai on the gallows that he may be 
he had prepared for him. And the king's servants said unto him, Behold, Haman standeth in the court. And the king said, Let him come in. So Haman came in, and the king said unto him, What shall be done unto the man whom the king delighteth to honor? Now Haman thought in his heart, To whom would the king delight to honor more than to himself? And Haman answered the king, For the man whom the king delighteth to honor, let the royal apparel be brought which the king useth to wear, and the horse that the king rideth upon, and the crown royal which is set upon his head. And let this apparel and horse be delivered to the hand of the one, the king's most noble princes, that they may array the man with all whom the king delighteth to honor, and bring him on the horseback through the streets of the city, and proclaim before him, Thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighteth to honor. Woo. Then the king said to Haman, Make haste, and make the apparel and the horse, as thou hast said, and do even so to Mordecai the Jew, that sitteth at the king's gate. Let nothing fail of all that thou hast spoken. Then took Haman the apparel and the horse, and arrayed Mordecai, and brought him on horseback through the street of the city, and proclaimed before him, Thus shall it be done unto the man whom the king delighteth to honor. And Mordecai came again to the city king's gate, but Haman hasted to his house mourning and having his head covered. And Haman told Zeresh, his wife, and all his friends everything that had befallen him. Then said his wise men and Zeresh, his wife, unto him, If Mordecai be of the seed of the Jews, before whom thou hast begun to fall, thou shalt not prevail against him, but shalt surely fall before him. And while they were yet talking with him, came the king's chamberlain and hastened to bring Haman into the banquet that Esther had prepared. Oh my, what talk about a slap in the face, Haman. <laughs> oh, he got puffed up on himself. And uh, the king showed him and the thing that he thought was going to be done to him uh, got done to his enemy, uh, who he saw as his enemy, uh, Mordecai. And Haman had to perform it and nothing could be left out. And uh, the one that Haman wants to see dead. Um, so, oh my, Lord, you know how to work. <laughs> Lord, help us. Um, the Bible talks about that um, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Uh, we really shouldn't take uh, vengeance ourselves on the people. And uh, this is one of those great lessons of how Mordecai just loved God, obey God, wanted to see God's people live. And uh, he didn't, he honored God by not bowing to this man. And um, he obeyed God rather than man. And uh, he stood for God and, um, and God honored that and blessed Mordecai and how he came to the king and saved the king's life ultimately. And the king honored that. So, uh, God works, and it's amazing to see God work. So, Lord bless. Look forward to be back with you again tomorrow, continuing reading through God's Word and uh, on this journey of Through the Bible in a Year. Lord bless.